In this lecture, we'll talk about determinants. We've already talked about the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So when we have a matrix whose rows are AB and CD, the determinant of that matrix is AD minus BC. And we've also seen that, that matrix ABCD is invertible if and only if that determinant calculation turns out to not be zero. So one way to think about what the determinant is telling us is it's a measure of whether the matrix is invertible or not. If the determinant is zero, the matrix is not invertible. If the matrix has a determinant that isn't zero, then the matrix is invertible. That's a useful thing that we'd like to have for larger matrices, and it does turn out that we can find determinants of larger matrices. So for example, the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix is the formula that you see here. And again, it turns out that this 3 by 3 matrix is invertible if and only if that calculation turns out to not be zero. Now, AD minus BC is pretty easy to remember, but this formula looks much more difficult, and you can imagine how much more complicated this might get for 4 by 4, 5 by 5, and so on. So what we're going to do is try to find a different way to think about how we find the determinant rather than memorizing a gigantic formula. So in order to break this down and understand where this formula comes from, we must first define a cofactor. And before we can define a cofactor, we need to talk about what's called a minor of a matrix. So given a square matrix, the minor, m sub i comma j, is the determinant of the matrix that we get by eliminating row i and column j from the matrix A. So for example, if we have this matrix, then the minor m sub 2 comma 3, that means we want to eliminate row 2, so we just scratch out row 2, and column 3, we scratch out column 3, and we figure out the determinant of what's left. So the determinant that we're looking for is the determinant of negative 5, 2, 7, 10. And here again, we're using our formula that the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix is AD minus BC. So in this case, the A is negative 5, the D is 10, the B is 2, and the C is 7. So that's negative 50 minus 14, that's negative 64. So that would be the minor. That's not the determinant. We're going to use minors to figure out the determinant but this is one piece that we're going to need along the way. Let's do one more minor just to practice. So the minor 3, 1, that means we're going to eliminate row 3 and column 1 from a matrix, and we get a 2 by 2 determinant. In this case, 2, 1, 0, negative 4. That's going to be 2 times negative 4 minus 1 times 0. That's negative 8. So minors are going to be used to figure out the determinant of this larger matrix. Okay, so the cofactor is almost the exact same thing as the minor. And in fact, half the time, the cofactor and the minor are going to be the same. Because the cofactor is just the minor multiplied by plus or minus 1. So this term here, negative 1 to the i plus j, that is always going to be either 1 or negative 1. Whenever we raise negative 1 to an integer power, it gives us an alternating sign. And so i plus j here, when we're in row 1, column 1, that exponent is going to be 1 plus 1, which is 2, and when we square negative 1, we get positive 1, and so that's why I put a plus here in that part of the matrix. But if we increase the row or the column by 1, that increases the exponent by 1, so now we're cubing negative 1, and negative 1 cubed is negative 1, so we get a minus sign. In these three positions, we're raising negative 1 to the fourth power, which gives us positive 1, negative 1 to the fifth power gives us a negative, and so on. And so what we get is this alternating pattern of pluses and minuses throughout this matrix. And remembering this structure of the pluses and minuses is a good way to remember the difference between cofactors and minors. I wouldn't recommend trying to memorize this formula with the negative 1 to the power. Just remember that we have pluses and minuses in this pattern, and you'll be fine. So now we're ready to talk about how to find a determinant of a large or larger matrix. So what we do is we choose any row or any column of the matrix. It's totally up to us, and we'll talk about how we can make that choice in a good way in uh, just a second. But once we've chosen that row or column, we multiply each entry of that chosen row or column by the corresponding cofactor, and then we add up the results. So let's do a few examples. So let's compute this determinant. So the definition tells us that we can choose any row or any column. So just to keep things simple for this first example, I'm going to choose the first row. So this first row, that's the row that I've chosen. And so what I get here, the determinant of this matrix A, is going to be the first entry of that row, which is 3, multiplied by the determinant 
of the matrix that I get by scratching out the first row and the first column. In other words, so I've got this position 3. I want to get rid of the column and the row that that 3 lives in. And that leaves me with 4, negative 9, 2, 8. Now the next position in my row is this negative 1. But since that's in row 1, column 2, remember we have that alternating pattern of pluses and minuses. So we're going to have a minus sign. And then we multiply that entry by the determinant that we get by scratching out the row and the column that that entry lives in, which gives me 0, negative 9, negative 1, 8. And then finally for my third entry, that's in row 1, column 3. So if we again remember our pattern of pluses and minuses, there was a plus there. And that's going to be plus 5 times the determinant of 0, 4, negative 1, 2. That's what I get when I scratch out the row and the column to find the cofactor there. So now we're finding 2 by 2 determinants. And those we have that formula. So we have 4 times 8 minus negative 9 times 2. Here minus minus 1 is plus 1. So we get 0 times 8 minus negative 9 times negative 1. And then finally plus 5 times 0 times 2 minus 4 times negative 1. So now all we have left to do is some arithmetic. So inside these brackets, 4 times 8 is 32. 9 times 2 is 18, minus a minus is a plus. 0 times 8 is 0, so we have minus negative 9 times negative 1, so that's negative 9. And then here we have 5 times, 0 times 2 is 0, minus 4 times minus 1 is plus 4. So 32 plus 18 is 50, times 3 is 150, minus 9 plus 20, so this is 161. And that's the determinant of this matrix. Now let's do the same determinant again, but let's pick a different row or a different column and see that we actually will get the same result, but just in a different way. So this time, let's pick the second column of this matrix. We're going to approach it in the same way, though. So the determinant of this matrix is we go down the column, so it's going to be negative 1 times the 2 by 2 determinant. And the 2 by 2 determinant that we get is what we get by blotting out the row and the column that that entry lives in. And so that's going to give us 0, negative 9, negative 1, 8. And also, since this negative 1 is in a position with a minus sign, if we remember our pluses and minus pattern, that's going to get a minus. The next entry in the, in the column that we chose is the 4, and that's in a position where we had a plus in our pattern of pluses and minuses. So we get plus 4 times a determinant. And when we block out the row and the column that that 4 lives in, we get 3, 5, negative 1, 8. Finally, our third entry in our, our column that we chose is a 2. That lives in a position that has a negative in our pattern of pluses and minuses. So it's minus 2. And the determinant that we get there is 3, 5. 5, 0, negative 9. And now let's work this out. So minus minus 1 is plus 1. Here we get 0 times 8 minus negative 9 times negative 1. Here we get 4 times 3 times 8 minus 5 times minus 1. And then minus 2 times 3 times minus 9 minus 5 times 0. So we get 0, minus, minus 9 times minus 1, that's minus 9. 3 times 8 is 24. Minus 5 times minus 1 is plus 5. 3 times minus 9 is negative 27. And 5 times 0 is 0. So we have minus 9. 24 plus 5 is 29. And 4 times 29, 116. And then minus 2 times 27, that's plus 54. And when we add all that up, we get 161. So the crazy thing about determinants, and we had almost completely different numbers here, but it just happened to work out that we get the exact same number. So it's just a neat property of determinants that it doesn't matter which row you pick, which column you pick, as long as you follow your calculations, you're going to get the same answer regardless. And this property of determinants can make it easier to find the determinant of a matrix if that matrix has a lot of zeros in it. 
So when we're deciding, so this is a four by four matrix. Obviously this would be a lot of work if we're not careful about which column or which row we choose. So the smart choice here is to choose this third row because that row is almost entirely zeros. The determinant of this matrix, if I call this matrix A, is going to be 3, and it's going to be a plus 3, because if we think about our pluses and minuses, plus, minus, that's going to be a plus. So 3 times the determinant of the matrix that I get by blocking out that row and that column. So that's going to be 0, 0, 5, 7, 3, negative 5, and negative 4, 2, 7. But now the rest of the entries in this row are zero. So it's going to be zero times some three by three determinant, but I don't even care what's in there because it's just going to get multiplied by zero. And then plus zero times another three by three determinant. But again, it doesn't matter what's in there because it's just going to get multiplied by zero. And then another zero times another three by three determinant. But again, it doesn't matter what's in there because it's just going to get multiplied by zero. So this is why it's nice to choose a row or column, if you can, that has as many zeros as possible, right? Even if it's just one zero that you have in that row or column, that's still that much less work that you have to do. And now that we have our three by three matrix, again, I'm going to choose this first row because that first row has two zeros in it. So it gives me less work to do. So this is going to be three times. Now my, this three by three determinant is going to be zero times a 2 by 2 determinant, but again, it doesn't even matter what that is, minus 0 times another 2 by 2 determinant, and then finally plus 5 times a 2 by 2 determinant. This one I do care because it's being multiplied by 5. And this is the determinant of the 2 by 2 matrix, 7, 3, negative 4, 2. All right, so putting this all together, I've got 3 times 5 times, and that 2 by 2 determinant is 7 times 2, minus 3 times minus 4, so that's 3 times 5. That's 14 plus 12 in those brackets. That's 26. And that works out to be 390. Now determinants are especially nice when we're talking about what we call triangular matrices. So a square matrix is triangular if all of the entries above or below the main, the main diagonal are 0. So this matrix on the left here is what we would call upper triangular because the non-zero stuff is above the diagonal. Now that doesn't mean that all of those stars there have to be non-zero. They're just the only places where we can have non-zeros. So some of those stars are allowed to be zero. It's just that everything below the diagonal would have to be zero. So all of the non-zero stuff lives in the upper half of the matrix. That's what we call it upper triangular. A matrix like this one on the right is what we'd call lower triangular because all the non-zero stuff has to live below the main diagonal. And the nice thing about determinants is that any triangular matrix, whether it's an upper triangular or lower triangular, is just going to be the product of the diagonal entries. And what we would do here is we would choose the first column of this matrix because it's got only one non-zero thing in it. And so our determinant would be this number, whatever that is, multiplied by the determinant of everything else. But in that second smaller matrix, we again choose the first column, which is only has one non-zero entry, and the determinant will be this number times the determinant of everything else, which is this smaller matrix. And then we continue in that way. We choose the first column. All we have to keep track of is that first entry in that first column, and then we get a smaller matrix and we keep going. And eventually, all we have is just the product of all those numbers that are on the diagonal. So determinants have a lot of nice properties, and we're not going to do too much proving in this section because the proofs about determinants are really tedious. It's really just diving down into that definition and dealing with lots of little elements and subscripts and everything. So uh, the proofs aren't particularly enlightening, but we do have some nice properties. So one that we've already talked about, which is that the matrix A is invertible if and only if the determinant is not zero. Another nice property is that given a square matrix, the determinant of a matrix is equal to the determinant of its transpose, because all we're really doing is flipping the numbers over, and all of the determinant stuff that we talked about is all symmetric. Rows and columns are basically treated the same. And this is really an important property, this last one here, is that if we have a square matrix, or two square matrices, A and B, and we multiply them together, the determinants multiply also. And this is a really nice feature that determinants have, is that the determinant of a product is the product of determinants. And we'll see that one again soon.